Welcome, Generals. Uh, my next battle was um, Bioforge, but unfortunately, um, when I played the game, I didn't I didn't actually record it. I made a mistake and I didn't play the game. And I'm not going to go back and play it again. So what I plan to do was to give you a idea of how I played the game and show you what the results were. And also, it gives me an opportunity to give you a little bit about my my philosophy uh, and, and my army building and so forth. So, so for the first first thing I want to do is I want to go to after Gettysburg. Okay, so Gettysburg is the battle just before Bioforge. Okay, so let's load Gettysburg in here. I'm going to show you what what how my what my my process was in putting together the battle for um, Bioforge. Okay, so here, this is my army after after Gettysburg. Okay, 35,000. Notice I got my first uh, three pound, 20 pound, uh, three, three star battery. Second core is now my, is always my um, spearhead because with them I can put as much supply as, in it as I want. All right. Notice I have almost forty-eight thousand there. Here's third core. They didn't see much action. And my cavalry core and so forth. And fourth core didn't have anything. Okay. So what I did for Bioforge. Okay. I take a look at the Bioforge. I can bring 15, 15 um, brigades. And I notice that is very open terrain. Okay, we're coming from here and they're on this side. Okay, which means they are in a very open area here. And when they're in a very open area, that says to me artillery. So, go back to my camp. All right, so what I did was Here's all my here's all the money and the and the um, the recruits that I got from Gettysburg. What I did was I said, okay, I want to bring a whole bunch of artillery. I can bring 15 brigades, so I decided on five artillery batteries, and that left me with um, 10 infantry bat uh, infantry brigades. So what I did was I looked at units that didn't require a whole lot of um, reinforcement to get them up to strength to about 2,000 to fight in the next small battle. And then I didn't touch anything else. I just, I just looking for units that I need, that I wanted to bring to the battle and reinforce them and nothing else. So for example, 13th US Regiment. Okay, notice their efficiency is 59. So what I did was, is I just used veterans I use veterans for everybody there, okay? Alright, so look at that. So they're left at 59. 59 efficiency. This guy. Let's just pump him up a little bit. Fifty-six efficiency. So that's what I was doing. I was looking for good regiments. That that um, required very little, very little reinforcements, and then I put all veterans in there to maintain their efficiency. Because I want my guys to be as good as possible. All right, in the second core, like third Pennsylvania, it's got palmettos, but he's not bad. Two thousand there. And I believe what I also did was um, I I uh, bought the Springfields with my reputation. Okay. In my career, I bounced it up to two on politics. So that's essentially what I did. And I also looked at my artillery. And I'm saying to myself, okay, what batteries can I bring to this battle? that if they get more experience, we'll get that third star. So looking at this 20 pound pair, uh, pair of battery, if you look here, 
experience to next level 93 of 100 so this guy this guy doesn't need a whole lot of experience to get him up to um, a, a third star and that's what I want and, and notice in my army how many 20 pound parrots I've got I've got one there there's one there's one so I've got three there there's one four five six and I believe this one was also I incorrectly no there's somewhere around here I think I had a I think I had him named as a 24 pound howitzer but he was actually he was actually a uh, this guy is actually a 24 pound howitzer I mislabeled him Okay, and you can see the rest of my troops here. These are from, these are all, this is from the end of Gettysburg, all right? So that's basically the way I did it, okay? Second U.S., you know, another one, just, just you know, just pop him up there. And boom, he said 2,000, and he's got 64 efficiency. So these guys... So I, that's what I did, okay? And when I was finished doing that, let's take a look at um, before by a force. Okay. And now we can see the um, um, my army and what it ended up like. So what I did was I took from first and second corps Third core is just a bunch of um, of uh, miscellaneous stuff that I'm slowly building up. And I put them all in fourth core. And here you can see fourth core. All right. 20 pound parrot, 20 pound parrot, 20 pound parrot. Brought three 20 pound parrots. These are for long range support, counter battery support. And then I brought two. 24 pound howitzers this is for close in infantry support and the rest of my guys as you can see all 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 good good quality troops with for the most part good weapons I also brought a couple that weren't so great. And that was because I wanted to get them training. All right, so when we go to the battles map, and then we look at, uh, let's look at uh, Bayou Forge. Okay, so there's fourth core. I'll start that off. That's good. Okay, now, so you're going to end up with, you have 15 cores, but they're going to come in two, they're going to be in two different um, groups. This is your first group. There's going to be 10 brigades. And then you're going to get another group over here of five brigades. And as you notice, I've got my in my artillery, there's a 20-pound parrot, 20-pound parrot, 20-pound parrot, and 24-pound howitzer. So these, so I have three 20-pound parrots and one 24-pound howitzer. And what happens is, I take my 24 my 20 pound parrots and I put them over here okay so that they can bombard anything in the area here and this um, 24 pound um, howitzer was going to follow my troops up here so so initially what I did that's what I did I put my 20 pound parrots up here and they got into uh, shooting uh, with uh, the enemy artillery and and then I moved my infantry up run into some skirmishers here and then there's a fortification there and what I did was I put a couple couple regiments here a couple regiments spare brigades here and then I I had them all run across run across and then once they got past the river then I charged two to the two of the brigades into there but also once I had these guys set up 
I put that 24 pound uh, uh, howitzer battery like right there, right in here. And from there, he could fire canister into that area there. So when I charge into these guys, these guys, they didn't have a chance and their morale broke almost immediately, okay? Meanwhile, my reinforcements arrived down here, okay? And so I've got four infantry regiments and a 24 pound howitzer. And whoops, I ran into three artillery batteries here, three artillery batteries. And at first, I didn't know kind of how how to handle that, you know. I had I kept my I put my guys in cover. My 24 pound howitzer was firing a counter battery. Um, I was I was using um, my 20 pound parrots over here in counter battery, and it didn't seem to be going nowhere until I finally figured out that. And this is what you should do anytime you run into artillery, is you just send skirmishers. So I I det detach skirmishers. Their artillery is up here, detached skir skirmishers who ran across into this area here, and between the skirmish skirmish fire and the artillery fire, I um, routed the um, three the three um, uh, artillery batteries here. Then I moved my infantry across. I I took up a position in this area over here, so as to be able to clear out any of the rebs into this area here, okay. Um, meanwhile, over here, um, some cavalry had come over and I, and I decided to chase them. So what I did was I took a, I took a couple um, infantry brigades um, supported by my, my howitzer and skirmishers. Now I put a whole bunch of skirmishers out, okay, and I moved across here. And what happened was these these cavalry retreated back into this corner. All right, and then I moved to block this area here. It's interesting to note that, you know, there's only two crossings down below here, here and here. And when I was fighting down here, my artillery battery ran out of supply, and I tried to get my supply down here, but they immediately reacted to that, so, so no way I could resupply these guys. And the fighting up here, I would um, capture a supply wagon, and that supply wagon would come down and supply my guys. So anyway, so from here, so this position here, I basically had the Rebs cleared out here, I had a whole bunch of uh, cavalry that I knew was caught up in here. So I decided to, again, send a whole bunch of um, skirmishers and, a, and I think one, one brigade, and I sent them up here and ran, ran up against some more cavalry. And these guys, these guys ended up holed up here. I sent another brigade, and essentially I surrounded them in this area here. And so I had this... I had a group of cavalry here, and I had a group of cavalry here. These guys cut off here. These guys cut off here. I made sure that I occupied this area so that these guys couldn't retreat down through here. And I then um, wiped them out, okay? Wiped out the cavalry. And I think one of the cavalry brigades surrendered. So once, so now, essentially, I've got the entire... Um, Confederate, the, the Confederates are entirely um, surrounded. And I start moving my infantry. At least make a couple uh, brigades down here. One down here, one down here, one over here. Moving a couple over here now. And put my 24 pound howitzer over here where he can fire into him, especially right in through here. Okay. And I moved my 20 pound parrots from this area up to this area, right to there. So they can fire into this encampment here and any any troops in response. And I bring, now I bring down the rest of my army down to here. So if my army is here, 
here and down here. And I just let my artillery just pound away at them and slowly started moving in on them. They were completely surrounded. In this battle, you don't have to worry about the time. You can fight the battle until the bitter end. So when the, in those kinds of battles, if you can, you need to wipe them out. So that's what I did. And in the end, I got a couple uh, infantry regiments also surrendered, and um, I totally, I totally wiped them out. So let's go to. Um, that's how the battle went. Let's go to. After after that battle. Okay. And let's go over to over here. And so what you see here is the victory was pretty complete. Um, I lost 4,127 men, and they lost 19,029 men for a kill-death ratio of 4.6 to 1. So I really smashed them. All right. I go back to my army. Let's take a look at that fourth core. And what you can see here is I get another three-star battery. So now I'm up to three three-star batteries. And first Connecticut, the one one of the one of the two that I had sent to get more um, experience gets its second star. Overall, you can see Irish Brigade suffered a bit and 17th uh, US Regiment uh, suffered a little bit. but generally my army is intact. So 4,000, you got to figure 4,000 casualties. I have medicine at 10, so it returns 20% of your casualties. So that's, um, let's see, 800 men. So in the end, in the end, I lose only 3,000 men in that battle. All right. So with that battle complete, I now begin, um, let's take a look at the armory of what I was looking at there. All right, I had a lot of Texas Tylers here. A lot of CS Richmonds, which are a good weapon. So I'm, I'm starting to use them now. Notice uh, these guys go out to only 340 and the CS Richmond goes out to 375. So it's a good weapon. I'm also starting to use more of the Springfield uh, M1861s because their range goes out to 400. And what you see in the uh, in your shop is that all of a sudden there's no more Harper's Ferries 1855. So all those guys who are equipped with Harper's Ferries 1855, I'm going to have to switch either to Springfield's, okay, a lesser weapon, or to the M1861, which is a better weapon. All right, skirmishers. So you see there, I got a bunch of hunters from them. I got a bunch of sh sawed off shotguns from them. It's showing the quality of their army is not that great, okay? Got a bunch of uh, Remingtons and artillery. I got a bunch of 12 pound howitzers and I got a bunch of 20, 10 pound parrots. And at this point, it became obvious to me that their best gun is a 10 pound parrot. And when I go back to my army, you see, I'm still using a 10 pound ordnance and that's an inferior gun. So, you know, he's got 10 pound ordnance. He's got 10 pound ordnance. Look, look at all these ordnance guns I got here. Um, another one, 10 pound ordnance. So I decide, based on my uh, on my uh, inventory, that it's time to start swapping out my 10 pound ordnance for uh, 10 pound parrots. Um, so now I'm going to go into um, how I then took this, this um, my army, 
and got it prepared for the next battle, which is Chickamauga. Um, in my career, I would hit another 10 points here in politics, so finishing politics. So if everything goes well in Chickamauga, I will put training to 10 and start working on logistics, which is really important because as I get more logistics, I don't have to put so much in the supply there. So 35,000 there, 48,000 there. This is why second core is my be my number one core because I can give them as much supply as I want and not worry about my artillery running out of ammo. Third core, 35,000. Fourth core, 35,000. So I've got lots of assets. Before I before I um, touch on um, how I refit my my army for Chickamauga, I want to show you uh, something that I consider to be very important, and it's the way I and it has a lot to do with the way I'm running my campaign. Because remember, I'm running a campaign that's based on attrition, and that is that I'm trying to destroy the confederate army and of course as you go through the um the campaign the confederates will keep will keep generating sufficient numbers to make the battles interesting the question is is um what quality will they be and by wiping them out okay you you continually can lower their quality now there are certain times when it resets and you get a whole bunch of new um, really good confederates will come in or they come in from the Western Theater or whatever it's and it's programmed in there so it keeps the game interesting but you can you can um, knock down their quality and the more you knock down their quality the easier the battle is going to be for you as you uh, push forward so I want to go to and and look at some some numbers here so here is Gettysburg before Let's load that. And what I'm looking at is, is you see, the army right now, my army, their army has been 50-55% for I don't know how long, continuously. And their army size goes up and down based on, on, the, camp, on the campaign, on how many losses they take and all that. But they're always right there in the general ballpark so that you're going to have... Uh, you're not going to as you would normally see in a battle of attrition, you're not going to knock them down so far in numbers that you just roll over them, okay? So the big number, in, in my opinion, is training, okay? Training right there, okay? And when you look at Gettysburg, all right, the training is 53 to 58%, okay? 53 to 58, which means basically... They're saying that half of their army is really well trained. All right. So let's go to um, before Bioforge. Before Bioforge. Okay. All right. Now. Gettysburg, okay, I killed a lot of Rebs. If you look down there, you can see what it's, four, five, six, seven, 68,000 of them. Okay, I killed a lot of Rebs, all right? But when I come to Bioforge, and the army numbers is reduced, but the most important thing, in my opinion, is that their training up here 48 to 53 percent so before Gettysburg they were 53 to 58 after Gettysburg they were 48 to 53 so I actually dropped them down by five percent all right drop them down by five percent and now let's go to um, that was before Bioforge. Let's go to after Bioforge. So I've had an army wipe out at Bioforge. 
Okay. Remember, 19,000 casualties there. And let's see if there's any effect on the training. And now you see training here is 47 to 52 percent. So, so going into Bioforge, they were 48 to 53. And after wiping out 19,000 of them, they dropped down to 47 to 52. So that's only a 1 percent drop. But it's a drop nevertheless. And their training is coming down. And so what that means is their quality is little by little. It's getting worse. Okay? And so my job is as their as their as as their training, as their as as their quality decreases, my job is to increase the quality of my army. So let's take a look at before Chikamagua. Okay. This is the next battle I'm going to fight. So I'll set up to fight. I haven't fought it yet. All right. Now, in Chikamagua, you only get two brigades of 25. Two, two cores of 25. So let's go back to my cores here. And now what you see here is both of my brigades are essentially set up the same, although one is a little bit better than the other. Here's first core. And as you can, let's see, let's take a look here. Two star brigades, okay? And, and, and we're talking good men here, okay? Um, what I did was I started, I started with my lower class um, troops that were going to go into the battle, like these guys. Okay, and even 5th Pennsylvania volunteers who are two-star regiment. Okay, they only have 34. But what I did was, the first thing I did was, was I increased their numbers up to 2,000 using veterans only. And the same can with 2nd Corps. So these guys... Those guys are, are, are pretty good, eh? 33, 35. So all of these guys who haven't who haven't really got their efficiency up, I increase them all with veterans to 2,000 so as not to lose efficiency in those groups. I'm trying to bring up the overall quality, the overall quality of my army, okay? So that I not only, not only have a very large army, but I also have a, a quality army. Um, I had a lot of money, and I sold a lot of weapons. Okay. And so for the most part, I was able to use a lot of veterans, and that's why this thing here, training, okay, which is the reduction in cost of veterans is really important. And after Chikamagua, I'll be bringing that to 10 and probably upping logistics. There's no reason for me to have a 5th Brigade, 5th Corps yet. So I'm going to leave that alone. I'll, be, I'll then be pumping on uh, logistics. So, But this number is really important because it reduces the cost of veterans. And so like I say, I was just as much as possible getting these guys... Um, with veterans, all right? And what you see here, okay, he's 54, 65, 56, 53. Now, now I'm trying to get these guys over 50. My two stars over 50, 67, 64, 62, 52, 48, okay? And that's, that's my... That's my worst core, okay? So let me go to second core. This is my best core. Okay? 56, 72, 52, 64, 55, 53, 61. So I'm trying now to make sure that those those um, two-star regiments have somewhere in the um, uh, vicinity of 50. 
I started, you know, really working on units and saying, okay, I need, I need them to be about 30, 35. And then I'd give them a really good weapon. And then I, then I pushed that up to 40 and then I push it up to 45 and now they're up to 50. So I am trying, uh, if at all possible, to keep those guys no less than 50 efficiency. 7th Regiment, 41, 51, 52, and Pennsylvania at 40. Okay. Now, at the same time, artillery is really important for me. And um, this it's going to be more and more uh, important as I go towards the end of the campaign and I'm going to be fighting uh, um, the Confederates in heavy fortifications. So I'm going to need, in my opinion, lots of 20-pound parrots and of very high quality. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm using my 24-pound howitzers, okay? Use my 24-pound howitzers to train up, train up, brigades plus the 20 pound parrot itself is, is excellent weapon so that look at this guy this guy has 92 out of 100 so he only needs eight more experience points and he will be a three star and you can see these 20 pound parrots look at this guy 97 of 100 and at the same time i'm replacing my 10 pound ordnance with 10 pound parrots. This guy's relatively new. Again, first core. Okay, second core. Now we're looking at my 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 big important core. All right. <laughs> Look at this guy. <laughs> well, you know, that's the way it goes. Huh? You can only use 85, but he's got this third perk here. Efficiency plus 20. I don't know if that works above and beyond the command points probably doesn't i don't know firearms plus 15 which increases your accuracy in all this plus 25 percent solid shot shell damage plus 25 percent now that is important and accuracy plus plus 10 so really makes it's really it's really good to to, to get him up to three stars this guy's mislabeled is a 20 pound parrot. Okay. So, here's my other 24 pound parrot again. <laughs> Look at this. Okay. But I'm trying to get him up to the to three star levels. 24 pound howitzers. I'm accepting the fact that I, I these guys can't keep up with um, their command, can't keep up with their efficiency. Here's another 24 pound parrot. Here it is, 72. And he has 87 out of 100. And now, once again, 10 pound parrot, but this guy's much better. And here, 10 pound parrot, this guy's much better. So now I'm I'm swapping out my um, uh, 10 pound ordnance batteries for either parrot batteries of either. 20 or 10 because before they were really high they were my best artillery and um, and now I'm swapping them out so that I get a lot more parrots so this is that's that's where I'm set up to go into um, Chicamagua however I'm also preparing for the future and that is that is I'm going to need a third and fourth core eventually I'm going to need a third and fourth core to win this campaign so Here's third core. Okay, now third core. Notice. Okay, they are all volunteers. They all have Springfields, but each of these three divisions has three. Three, brigades, of volunteers, and they all have the same efficiency. And so what happened there was, I took a bunch of miscellaneous regiments that I had. That had pretty high efficiency, and once. And once um, I had, once I had uh, finished my work with first and second corps, then what I did was these miscellaneous. I had I don't know I think three or four 
that had fairly high um, efficiency levels, I disbanded them. And when you disband them, um, they go into the recruit pool. And um, when they were all finished, um, going in there, plus with the extra few th thousand men that I already had in there, okay, it ended up with an average of 22 efficiency. If you, okay, the average recruit now has 22 efficiency. So then what I did was I built nine new brigades and all of them therefore have 22 efficiency plus five from the um, endurance course so they're all the same 27 27 27 27 27 27 and these guys are long range they're long range project as i go through the battles um i will be i will be um um making sure that my first and second corps uh, veterans are are kept in um, at a um, at a good you know good uh, quality and numbers and then anything that I have left then I will be pumping into these guys and slowly slowly hopefully raising their numbers I'll have to do that with veterans but since they're one stars it won't be so much cost and especially because my veteran costs are down low. I've got the weapons, you know, and I just slowly will build these guys up so that I'll have a pretty good third core whenever I need it. Or if necessary, I can um, mix them all up and um, I can have at least three cores with two really good divisions and then a fairly good and a, and a okay fourth division if I ne if necessary I'm also I'm also working on my fourth division which is going to be my cavalry division okay one way or another I'm going to bring a cavalry division and these guys these guys are just you know they're not very good because I haven't been able to 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 work them very well and um, um, they were a bit uh, all sharps uh, however when I looked at my armory and I'm starting to see better weapons are becoming available to me because of the um, losses of the imp of the enemy. I'm now st starting to increase their um, weapons to a better quality. So I've got two two caval cavalry um, division uh, brigades that have the pattern 1861 infield. So it's this one and this one. So I'm slowly increasing their quality as well. So overall, overall, um, as I fight this this campaign, okay, I mean I'm I'm just really, really um, putting everything I can into just crushing the Confederates, so as to keep their quality as low as possible, because. The, as I say, I'm I'm pretty sure that the AI will always generate in numbers a good amount of troops, so that you just don't have a, a, an easy an easy um, battle. I mean, this is legendary after all. They're going to have the numbers and even more than you're going to bring to the battle. But the difference is the quality. And so, as I knock. What I'm hoping is, as I knock down that quality, and I and as I tried to show you with with the training numbers, uh, you know, I've gone from a, a top of 58% from Gettysburg down to 52 at Chico, Chico Magua. So I've dropped them down by 6%, and you have to you're chipping away at them, you know, and so their quality is little by little going down, but my quality at the same time. Is little by little going up, and and um, hopefully, as I progress into the um, final years of uh, this campaign, what you're going to see is um, the battles will be still difficult, but they will be a, it will be a lot easier for me to win when um, I'm not having to face uh, uh, Confederate armies that are made of all three-star units and um, if what happens 
if what I ex expect happens, happens, what I'm going to be seeing is more and more um, of the Confederates with one and two star brigades and less three star brigades. So there's that's that's kind of how I view the campaign, and um, but again, but again, um, to to get there, to get there, you've got to you've got to hammer the Confederates, and even sometimes when it means extra losses, you just got to keep hammering on the Confederates because um, even even when you even when a um, brigade um, totally disintegrates, the the survivors are going to go back into the um, Confederate um, um, recruit pool, and they're going to bring all that experience that they have with them. So even though you you get a three star regiment to uh, totally disintegrate, okay, those survivors are going to go into his. Re recruit pool and he's going to he's still going to have a lot of really good recruits so it's going to take it's going to take a lot of hammering um, to, to, to kill those guys off and at the same time you're having to deal with if there are survivors you know if all the guys who are survivors the one stars who are survivors let's say I take a one star and I and I destroy their brigade okay um the survivors of them have gotten more experience, so they're going to be working their way up towards two stars. So it's a, it's a big struggle, uh, um, to, 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 and and it's and it's and it's a step by step thing. It's nothing huge. It's incremental. It's it's it's, it's little by little, chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. And there you go. And that's. Um, that brings me to the Battle of Chickamauga, and um, if at all possible, let's see. They have they're saying they have fifty two to fifty seven. Let's see what um, what I'll be I'll be bringing to this battle. So Vanguard will be Second Corps. They're my best, and then so I've got. 53,000 men that I'm going to be bringing to the battle. So I expect to be outnumbered, um, which is usually the case. But um, these guys are ready for battle. And um, in the next video, we'll see what happens. So until then, I will see you later.